A little over three years ago, I did a review about Fundrise and how it was actually beating the returns of my investment property. And ultimately, I ended up selling that investment property and then putting more money into Fundrise. Now we're four years into that investment, and I want to share exactly what my earnings have been, how it's been progressing, and what I'm doing from here. Now, if you aren't familiar with Fundrise, basically, it's a crowdfunded real estate investing platform. So rather than needing to come up with a whole bunch of money to be able to buy your first investment property, you can take a smaller amount of money or a whole bunch, whatever you want to do, and join other investors and Fundrise will take that money and they will put it in specific investments and then use their investment managers to make the investments for you. Now, what I love about it personally is just how simple the whole thing is. It's very intuitive, very easy to use. There's not a lot of knobs to turn. It's like they're doing all the work for you on the back end. It's like you're just putting some money in and letting them go to work for you. So now let me hop into my account. I'm gonna show you my account so you can take a peek, see what's going on. If we come over here, you can kind of see the breakdown of everything. So I started with Fundrise with, I think it was like 18,500, I believe is what I started with. And so they have the breakdown. So this is 2022, the year to date, what's happened here. And so the dividends we've earned so far in this year, $369. The appreciation has been about $984. Some of that, I don't know that all of that is realized. And by realized, I mean, once you sell the property, then you realize that appreciation. And so total kind of gains for 2022 has been $1,300 or so, which is great. And what was really fun is last year, I remember getting an email from them showing that the, re the average returns, I think were like 22% last year or something, which is just fantastic. But we all know the real estate market's just been insane. And so it makes sense that they've been really, really good. So I created a spreadsheet just kind of breaking down um, kind of what my earnings have looked like. And so I started kind of first measuring them in 2020. And so it was all based off of how much I initially invested. And I should say, they have different investment options. I think there's three different key investment options that you can choose from. In order to be able to access these different options, you need to be on at least a standard plan. So the super cheap basic plans, I don't think you have this. I think it's just one simple option for you. But if you're on one of the standard plans or above, you have different options of how to invest. So this one, supplemental income is focused on income, creating a passive stream of income through dividends. Long-term growth is more focused on appreciation uh, and then balanced is a combination of the two. And so I started this first couple of years using the balanced option and then I switched to the long-term growth one about a year ago or so. And so, yeah, so it was right in here. It looks like it was about April of 2021 when I switched to that. And so at the beginning, again, I had the balanced one in which the balanced one generally has lower returns than the growth, the growth option. But you have more, if you're trying to create an income stream to live off of, you're going to have a more steady stream of dividends. So it's a little a little bit better for that. So as you can see in 2020, what I was seeing were about eight to not maybe 9% annual returns. But at the beginning of this year, when I calculated the earnings, and this is all earnings to date. So this wasn't, these aren't annual earnings. This is, I should say, this is average annual return. That'd be a better way to describe this. Average annual return on each of these, because this is spread out over the four year period. And part of this is because of the complexity of trying to track this down because of the unrealized appreciation, like when you only realize that when they actually sell off one of the properties. And so all of the money I have invested in there, I, I think there's like five or six different properties that I'm part of. But when one of them sells, then that will add a higher amount to my actual realized appreciation. So if they don't sell anything for a particular year, my, my earnings will be lower that year. So all that to say, I thought the best way to kind of approach this was to do it by an average annual return. And that's kind of how these numbers are rolling out. So on January 1st, 2022, when I look back since I started in, I began, when was it? February of 2018. So that was nearly three years. And I had about an average annual return of about 12% at that point. And then I just did it again today. And we're up to close to a 14% average annual return since starting with them which is fantastic. And I'm tickled pink, that's great. But one of the things I really like about Fundrise is that they're very transparent in how they communicate, and which is just really, really nice. And so they had this letter that they wrote to all of the members. And I, I love the honesty of this. They basically said, uh, it's worth restating that we believe achieving this kind of performance with some property investments appreciating 50 to 100% in a single year is extremely rare. And so it's our, it's unlikely in our opinion that such exceptional performance across such a large swath of assets will be repeated often. And so I just appreciate that honesty to be upfront and say, yes, yeah, so we had a killer year, but it's probably not gonna happen every year. Yeah, and so 
So here's a breakdown of the 2021 returns, just to kind of put that in context. So their total return, their overall average was 20, almost 23%, which is just bonkers. But here's how the three different options break out. So growth was about 25, 23, and about 18% for income. So all that to say, I've really enjoyed uh, investing with Fundrise and it's just different than the stock market. And I enjoy having a different asset class I can put money into. And I also love that it's 100% passive. And so while I did like my investment property and I will be in purchasing investment properties in the future, so I'm not saying don't do that. I'm not saying I'm against that. But even when I had a property manager, it was not 100% passive. Like there were just more things that I had to do for whatever reason with it. And this is 100% passive. And so while my return still might not be as good as actually owning investment property, I love the super passive nature of this investment. And uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Right, I actually just found this page and I think this is super insightful. So I just wanted to share a little bit out of this. So this is the Fundrise Performance Verse uh, Public REITs, Real Estate Investment Trusts, another way to invest in a lot of different real estate um, or public stocks being the S&P 500. And this is super fascinating uh, for me because we can see like, Public REITs just seem to be the big winner in terms of performance last year, earned about 40%, like which is fantastic. Stock market did 28%, Fundrise did about 23%. So it didn't perform quite as well as those, but the volatility seems to be a lot less. If we come down here and look at the worst quarter, um, all in this section right here, the worst quarter in Fundrise for the last five years, or I guess almost six years now, has been 1%. Whereas the worst quarter for the REITs has been negative 25% and negative 19% for the S&P 500. Um, and so it do, the best quarter, it doesn't perform nearly as well as the best um, REIT quarter or the best stocks quarter. But if you're looking for something that's less volatile and more stable, uh, it certainly looks like this might be an option to consider. Um, because like even if we scroll up, like there haven't been a single quarter since this has begun, or since 2017 anyway, uh, that's been negative. And meanwhile, both the stock market and real estate investment trusts have had negative quarters. So yeah, that's pretty compelling. Um, pretty compelling information for sure. Um, so anyway, just wanted to get that added in here as well. And a couple questions that I get about Fundrise quite a bit are, what are the fees? How much is it gonna cost me? And it's really simple, it's 1%. So I'll flip back over to my account so you can kind of see the breakdown of this and how this breaks out. The all time fees I've paid are $110 since I've been in there for the last four years. So this year, it looks like I paid $17 in fees. And so in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty low. And I'm pretty happy with a 1% fee on this, considering if I were buying actual rental properties, there'd be so much more involved in that in terms of fees, you know, from real estate agent fees to all kinds of other things. So I really love the simplicity of that. Now, the question I get is, is this a long-term investment? And short answer is yes. They are looking for long-term investors. They don't want people to come in and invest whatever thousand dollars for a month and then pull out. Like that makes everything really difficult for them because it, at the end of the day, like they're investing in real estate. This is not a super liquid investment. And so if everybody wants to invest and pull money out real quickly all the time, like it's just really, really difficult for them to kind of manage that. So they're looking for longer term investments with a five year horizon or more. Now that said, I wouldn't, from what I understand, that doesn't mean your money is locked up and that you can, because I haven't withdrawn anything, but from what I understand, that doesn't mean you can't withdraw. It just means that they are making it clear what they want out of investors. And they don't want a whole bunch of investors who are just going to be in and out, in and out all the time. Keep that in mind as you invest with them. The other thing I would add is, and this has proved true with me, and I know part of this is market, just the way the market is gone. But for what I understand, the longer you invest with them, the, the earnings tend to be better. And I think part of that is because you have more of these properties that are appreciating over time. And then when they sell off, you're getting a higher percentage of that appreciation. So it makes a little bit of sense to really stick with them and to let this be a longer term investment. Another question that comes up a lot that I wish wasn't the case, but is this available outside of the US? And and I check this somewhat regularly because I get this question a lot. But at this point, it is only available in the US. And I will let you know if they change that. But at this point, that's what's going on with it. And so if you are considering using Fundrise, one cool thing that just rolled out recently is this $50 sign up bonus. So if you're interested, I'll have a link down below this video that you can get that will get you that $50 bonus. And from what I've seen, you do actually need to use the link of a particular member in order to get the $50 sign up bonus. 
So again, I'll have that down below and it's a win-win because it's a fer referral thing. And so I get 50, you get 50, we all come out ahead. Sounds like a great deal. And so if you have any questions about Fundrise, go ahead and ask away. I'll do my best to answer anything that I can answer. And if you're looking for something, another way to invest, it's not in the stock market, that's a little bit different. You know, this is a great option to consider. So hope you enjoy and I'll see you in the next video.